All right, so as you're looking at our course, our week is starting to get fleshed out. We begin with um, the Google Slides that we're gonna use in class. We got some sort of class task, held students accountable through the assignment tool. And then we use the lesson tool to hold students accountable for their reading and reflection. All right, and this might be for homework, whereas this stuff up here is in class. So now, according to our syllabus, because really remember, the bulk of our work in terms of designing this course is actually done in Google Docs where you're mapping everything out with your Google Docs syllabus and organizing everything with your Google Drive. Take a look. So I'm going to switch to list mode here and where I've got all of my stuff organized by week. And really, all we're doing with eLearn is linking to all of these resources inside our Google Doc. So I'm going to go to week one. And if I look at my syllabus right here, and let's zoom in a little bit, I've, I can see that for week one, we've already got our, our Google Slides linked in eLearn. We already have the class assignment linked. Here's our articles. Plus, remember, I found an optional article. So let's add that. Optional read this article. And then I had some that article three, right? Okay, so now I want to have students watch a video. And I want to hold students accountable to that video. So how, how am I going to do it? So first off, what I've done, uh, what I recommend you do is as you are creating your course, organize everything in Google Drive, even the videos. So I'm going to go back into link or I don't know, icon mode, I suppose. So here's the video. Uh, and the way I organize my, my, I don't know, my, my thinking and organize myself is if I find a video, I will paste the link to that video right here in a Google Doc. Just give it a little title up here in the upper left hand corner of what that video is going to be talking about. I might include some reflection questions as a reminder to myself so that when I'm finally ready to start inserting it into eLearn, I'll have a recollection of like, why did I choose this video and what was my purpose? Okay, so we're going to take that video. So if I'm going to go to YouTube. Two places I can, what? Stop talking. Okay, so two places to get the link, uh, right here. There's the one right there. Or I can copy it directly from the URL way up here. Uh, they, they will have different links, but they go to the same place. All right, so that's where the link, so this is the video I want. So I can, I've copied that link. Of course, I already had that link right here in my Google Doc as I was organizing my thinking and planning my course. Um, so I could have copied it from right here. So there's a variety of ways for you to insert a video link and hold students accountable. Um, plus, hold them not accountable. You can just use one of these external link tools and just link to the video where the students watch it without accountability. You're just like, here it is, go watch it if you wish. Uh, but I'm gonna show you a couple of ways uh, to hold students accountable to watching that video. One, we're gonna use uh, the assignment tool, and then the other one, we're gonna use the lesson tool. These are familiar to you. So I'm gonna turn on editing, and first let's use the assignment tool. So I'm gonna add an activity, click assignment. I'm gonna video. Llamas versus alpacas. Sounds like a West Side Story kind of a thing. Llamas, sharks, and the, what is it? Sharks, what is it? The sharks and the other things. I can't remember. Jets, that's it. Okay, um, so there's my title, Llamas versus Alpacas. And here I'm going to say, okay, step one, watch this video. Now, here's what's really going to be neat here. Um, if I put in the URL, all right, and, and just leave it alone, it's kind of boring. But a key thing is if I link it, so I'm going to highlight it, I'm going to click the link tool, I'm going to paste in that URL for the YouTube video, click, uh, I'm not going to click open in a new window. I'm going to leave that unclicked and you'll see why, because uh, we have a filter turned on that's going to automatically embed this video on the page itself, all right? Step two, answer, uh, uh, write 
right? Uh, reflection by clicking the add submission <laughs> button below, all right? Um, but I had some specific questions, didn't I? So I'm gonna go to my YouTube, ah, here's my questions. So in this case, true or false, llamas are generally larger than alpacas, and which animal would you prefer? So <clears throat> I can ask both of these things in and have the students write it in essay form. It's not gonna grade this because it's an assignment. So let's copy that and write a reflection by clicking on uh, the submission below. Uh, respond to the following two prompts. Following two prompts. Let's get that going. Good. Boom. Here it is. And I'm just going to paste in the two prompts. There's my two prompts right there. There's our two prompts. Now, uh, in this, because this is an assignment, I don't want them to upload. This is just a reflection on a video, Sh short little one paragraph. So maybe I should say write a one paragraph reflection by clicking the add submission below. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna turn off, turn submitting a file, and instead I want them to only write a free response in the uh, paragraph thing, the editing text box below. All right, now, uh, all the kinds of things. What do we? What kind of feedback? Well, we're not gonna do annotating a PDF because they're not submitting a PDF, are they? So I'm only gonna have the feedback comments, um, what kind of submission settings. I'm gonna set all these up generally. Uh, remember, I, I leave the default. Uh, there are no group submissions here. Notifications, I want the students to be notified, but not me. What grade do I wanna give? Oh, let's give this five points. Simple direct, although later I could talk about rubrics if you're interested. We're gonna leave it as uncategorized. Um, and then all of the common module settings, the restrict access, all of that, we, we just leave as default. And then I can hit save and return to course. And there it is. Now, what, what, what will it look like? I could turn off editing if I wish and click on it. And look at that, there it is. The video is automatically embedded because I highlighted that link. I, I linked it. If all I did was paste in the URL, it wouldn't automatically embed the video. So watch this video, write the paragraph, responding to these two things. So the students are gonna click the button down below that says add a submission. So why don't we uh, go as a student and I'm gonna scroll down and there it is. There is this, what the student is going to see. I'll click on that, there's the video. And then they can see that they're supposed to respond to these two prompts. In fact, if they wish, they can copy them. And then uh, I'm gonna do add submission and there it is. Now the students can paste in the prompts and they can answer each prompt separately, can't they? So, um, llamas are generally larger than alpacas. True, uh, adult llamas are about twice the size of adult alpacas. Woohoo! All right. And the student, if they want, they can. Um, they can do some simple formatting. Not a lot of fancy formatting. There's not a, a lot that you can do. Uh, because all of this has to be web safe and web friendly. So you have limited kinds of um, formatting tools. I'll, I'll make the, the prompts themselves bold. How's that? And then which animal would you prefer? I would prefer to have the llama because blah, 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 blah. And then I can just kind of copy that and there's my essay. All right, and as a student, remember I'm doing this as a student. Once I'm done, I hit save changes and I can see that I've submitted it. Here's my online text that I did right there. Super short, super simple. If I wanna continue editing, I can, um, or remove the submission altogether. Now, what is that gonna look like back as a teacher again? So let's go to here. Now I'm back in teacher mode. And so what I would do as a teacher is I would click on that assignment 
and I would now see that I have one student who needs grading. So I'm going to click that grade button. And remember, I might need to change my filter so that the assignments are show or students are showing up. Right now, I have no filter. And then I can read the student's response, give it a score, and here is the teacher feedback right there. And then I can hit Save Changes or Save and Show the Next Available Student. In either case, the student will be notified that they're, they have received a grade. So I'm going to click Save Changes. I'm going to go back here. And uh, I can now see that no assignments need grading because I have graded all the students. So what is the student going to see again? Let's go back. And there it is. And the student can see that it's been graded. And they can see that, oh, I got a five out of five. And there's the teacher feedback if they want to read the teacher feedback. OK, so now that is this idea of inserting a video using the assignment tool in order to hold students accountable. Let's do the same thing, only this time we're going to use the lesson tool in order to hold the student accountable. So I'm going to go to edit. And just because I think I lost it, I'm going to copy the link to that video again. There it is. See how why I organize the way I do? I needed the, the link again. I didn't have to go to YouTube and find it. I already had it. I stored it. And a lot of the work you're going to do, I'm going to keep harping on this, a lot of the organizational work to make your course an easy course for you to facilitate is actually in how organized you are in your Google Docs. All right. So I copied the link. I'm going to go back to eLearn. This time I'm going to hold students accountable through the lesson tool. So let's call this video uh, llamas versus alpacas, alpacas. All right, so I'm going to step one again. Watch this video. Boom, right there. But remember, that won't be embedded until I make it a link. All right, so I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to click the link tool. I'm going to paste in the YouTube URL. And I don't need to worry about opening in a new window. I'm just going to click it, um, uh, click Save or whatever I said right there. <laughs> and then I'm going to hit Step 2, uh, write, uh, you know, answer the reflection questions below. All right. All right, now because this is a lesson, things are going to be a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to open up all of my options. All right, so first off, do I need to mess with how things are, are, are appeared? Nope, I'm not going to do that. And then I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to make it always available for flow control. Allow students to review. Absolutely. Provide option to try a question again. Yes, this is the flow. The flow is where a lot of the important stuff is going to happen. Um, I'm going to show, show more right there. I want 03 maximum number of temps per question. And I make I want to make sure that it's going to the the path it's going to follow the normal lesson path how many points do i want to make this oh let's make it worth five points uncategorized so you're all of this is basically showing up uh the same now remember practice lesson i'm going to leave it as no uh, because if i say yes that makes this not worth any points even though i typed in points up here it's going to make it just practice free of points i don't want that i want it to be worth five points and do I want to allow retakes? Absolutely. And uh, show more. What do I do with those retakes? I want it to use the maximum, let's say. All right. And then the rest of these things, common module, restrict, tax, uh, tags, and competencies is the same. So I'm going to save and display because there it is. That's everything that I want. But this time, I need to add a couple of questions, right? So I'm going to add a question page. And let's make that first one a true or false. And I don't remember what my question was. Oh, there it is, true or false. Lem llamas are generally larger than alpacas. So I'm going to put um, llama size just as a reminder uh, versus alpaca. 
and I'm gonna paste in my question right there. I don't need it in true in bold. Uh, and then down here, what's the correct answer? Well, the correct answer is true. Well done. Because it's the correct answer, it's gonna to go to the next page and assign the student one point. Uh, the wrong is false in this case. Oops. Watch the video again. And then because it's wrong, it's gonna stay on the same page, but also assign the person zero points and click save. And there's my first question. I wanna do that second question, which is a free response. So let's call this uh, free response, boom. Which would you ex which animal would you prefer to have? Good. So I'm going to go over here in my lesson. I'm going to add a question page, and I want to make it an essay. So I'm going to add a question page, and there is my free response right there. So I'm going to just call it the title here. Students never actually see this stuff up here, this page title. This is for your purposes only. Uh, there's my prompt and it's always going to go to the next page and the student will not get this one point score until I grade it. So I'm going to click save and there we are. I am officially done. If I want to preview it, I can click on the preview and I can see what it's going to look like. Llamas are generally larger than alpacas. True. It, it gives me the response yay you're well done and then click continue and then here is my free response now when i hit submit as a teacher nothing's going to show up because only student review uh, student work is available for uh, review so what is that going to look like again i'm going to go to the student view refresh my screen and there it is right there llamas versus alpacas and the student will watch the video can answer the questions, click Submit, yay, continue, free response from the student's point of view, <clears throat> right here, hit Submit, and now, as a reminder, uh, their grade is not complete until you, as the teacher, grade those essays, right? Right now, that true or false question was graded, and the student now has a one out of two, which means they have half of their five points and they're waiting for the other half once you grade your grade the essays. So what is that going to look like? Here we are. I, as the teacher, can click on that assignment. I can grade the essays right here and I can see that this student has submitted something but it has not yet been graded. So I can click on grade. There's my student's response. Teacher feedback here. And then assign points. You got to remember, I'm going to assign points, click Save Change. And if I want, I can tell that student that their essay has been graded. And it's indicated right here as having been sent. So, what is the student going to see when they click on their course dashboard, click on their grade icon? They can scroll all the way down to see that, read and reflect. Eventually, I'm going to find. There it is, llamas. And they can see that they got their full five points right here. Now remember, look at this grade book. This grade book is out of order. These assignments are really, they show up in the grade book in the order that I created them in eLearn. I'm gonna show you in a later video how to reorganize this to make your life uh, easier for grading purposes, all right? And so that, is using is how we would use the assignment tool or the lesson tool to assign a video to our students and have them held accountable to actually watching that video.